I'm putting this right here for now. Pull the clutch and throw the basket.
hose on it, I could do that a lot. Did it hit your outside coverage? Yeah, it broke everything. Yeah, it broke the yeah, man. The washers kicked it all the way out. Yeah, yeah. See, it broke that off. You know, it all walked away. Washington. Now, by my shaft, probably just like the other one. Probably broke right in the middle. It was in like third gear or something when they did it, like breaks it. I'm gonna just start pulling it. I hope they got some parts over there. Yeah. Yeah, just kill all of them. Alec up to the six spot. JR Carr into the field. Both naked out of here. He gains on the bump. He's 678. Bump spot. Power. Well, that's a nice get healthy weekend for him so far, isn't it? I just look very nice looking around. Power coming out. Change all the way. He is two out of one. Yeah, well, we're not sure yet. We got to get in and see. See if the cases are tore up or, you know, if we can just put a new shaft in it and fix the tranny. I don't know. Got to get it open and see what else got broke inside of it. I'm just gonna uh, All coming up now. I'm done. Where'd I end up? Where'd I stay in? Oh shit, man. Where'd I end 16 up? 16.8, Gary. With a 155 in there. Is it, my number's 60 foot, 330. We're identical to what I had to run before. 16.8, 3074. Both runs. And what's your run? 32 and a 5. Or 32 uh, or 4. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm right. I'm I'm oh, That's oh, me. You're in. Yeah, but then I'm going to stay. Yeah. I need to see. Well, I'm going to go ask Joe. Uh, oh, we got to leave for us.
Well, I've done this a few times. Uh, <laughs> when GT was uh, riding, we did this a couple and had a couple late nighters. So now I see you training a new crew chief. Yeah, GT's little brother, LA. He's uh, 13 now. He wants, just like GT did, he wants to get involved in it. Is that how GT started, too? Yep, exact same way. Helping me when they went in. Younger ages. That's how it all starts. You gotta know how they work before you can get on and ride them. You think that kind of gives them a little advantage over some other guys that just kind of jump into it? And... Oh, sure. Because, you know, when they're on top of the bike, they know what they feel and they know what's going on going down the track, especially when something like this happens. They, you know, you get a feeling it's not supposed to do what it's doing so you pull in the clutch and clip the throttle so you don't do any more damage than what's already done when something fails, like the transmission in this case. So what was the feeling when it went Well, in this case, it, uh, I think I was in, I shifted second, third, and when I put it in fourth, and then all of a sudden it jumped back in third after it was in fourth, so it kind of throws a reverse G-force on you trying to kind of throw you over the handlebars and when the transmission downshifted at full throttle. Right. Are you always almost kind of prepared for something like that to happen? Uh, not really, but you, you kind of catch it before it gets, you know, real bad. And, it, and it's only a split second of the reverse G when it does downshift and throw you forward and then you, you know you catch yourself and hold on but uh you got you know you got to be ready for it you can't just be you know not prepared you got to be prepared to hang on it as much as it's taking off just as much as it trying to spit you over the handlebars when it does break apart so you must feel confident these things are pretty safe. We let the sun dry and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they are. You know, I mean, things can go wrong, like in this case, but uh, they are. They pretty all in all, they safe. There's not a lot that can go. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of times it's inexperience, maybe that people run into trouble. No, I don't think so. It's just, uh, you know, in this case, the transmission just broke and let go. You know, uh, it, it, all I was doing was sitting on pushing the button, going through the gears, and then all of a sudden your face is into the handlebars, you know, and, and your instincts instantly to chop the throttle and pull in the clutch and begin slowing it down. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why I'm able to come back out now. Uh, he got his own deal, so I can kind of get back where I left off before he started riding for me to get his career going. How about his first win? How did you feel when he got that first win? Oh, uh, that was at St. Louis there. Uh, you go it. Uh, Oh, well, naturally, I was proud of him. That year, his rookie year, he was just setting the world on fire out there. I mean, he came out here, he was, well, you know, we started here, he was only 17. He wasn't allowed to even get points that year because of the tobacco law with Winston. And uh, he just came out here, and I mean, he drove like he knew what he was doing for 10 years out there. He was beating up on these guys that were real pros at it for years and years. And, he just, he knew coming out here that he had the hand, had uh, a handle on it, and I told him he was good, and he did listen to me, and he rode it like a real champion, and that's why he got the deal he's got today, you know, with the Harley team. And kind of, after you doing it so many years, it's kind of nice to see your son. Yeah, well, you know, back when I started, they weren't fast like this, so, you know, I, I knew when, at 14 when I started training GT, I knew the mistakes that most people made, and those bad habits are hard to break there when you want to develop them. So I didn't let him make those bad
I didn't let him get into those bad habits early in learning, so therefore he, he just, he was flawless when he came out, you know, in his professional year as a rookie, and that's why he did the job he did, and that's why they had their eyes on him that whole first year. So, what, do you, what do you see in your next son? Do you see any of those traits? Uh, oh, yeah, I think he's going to be a little more braver than GT was because he rides dirt bikes and stuff around the house, and we go camping, and uh, he's ready to go now, but I think he's still a little, he's only 13, and he's a little smaller than GT was at that age. So I'm holding him up a little till next year, probably, or maybe late in this year. But he's got the wants to get on uh, uh, the bike that I let people train and learn on. So we'll see. Maybe around October, November, we'll maybe let him start making a few little easy laps on it. What age did you start? Oh, I started uh, in this pro stock class, I think I was about 18 years old, you know. But back then they were really street bikes with great little hopped up engines in them. They weren't nothing like this today. You train a lot of other people to ride yeah, bikes too. Yeah, I've worked with some people. You want to wait till that question? Yeah. I've worked with some people. I teach people that never rode before how to, uh, you know, they come down, we go to Hattiesburg and no problem, a uh, new track bus, and teach them, you know, from the very uh, very beginning. I usually take people that never ever rode before and just start them out slow and easy and work them up to whatever level they can get to on their own. Yeah. What's the biggest learning curve for people that never rode something like this? The biggest thing I think for them to try to overcome is hold that throttle wide open and you got to pop that clutch and then when you do that, that 10 inch tie wants to grab and just take off and most of them aren't holding on that first time. And it's a little scary for me to stand there and watch them because that's my $40,000 bike when I see their hands come off the handle <laughs> when they let that clutch go because they really, they're not prepared for what's about to happen because they haven't experienced that before. And it, it, you, you tell them and tell them, now hold on, because when you throw that clutch out, she's going to take off. And they just have no clue until they do it that first time. And then they got full respect to this bike. Yeah. So these are nothing like a street bike, the power of the street bike. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. There's, street bikes go fast, but these things accelerate so quickly. compared to the street bikes. What's the G-Force you come off of? Uh, this weekend, this one's pulling about three and a half Gs from a dead stop. You gotta remember, this thing goes zero to 60 in one second. Zero to 100 in two seconds. So you, you're getting up to speed quick. That's why we only need a quarter mile to go 190 miles an hour on these things in seven seconds. Yeah, just keep working.